peoples, clap your hands, cry to God with shouts of joy, Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Today is Wednesday, May 19th, Wednesday of the seventh week of Easter. Mass this morning is offered for the repose of the souls of Ray, Jackie, and Rick Bendel. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously grant to your church a merciful God, that gathered by the Holy Spirit, she may be devoted to you with all her heart, and united in purity of intent. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. At Miletus, Paul spoke to the presbyters of the church of Ephesus. Keep watch over yourselves and over the whole flock, of which the Holy Spirit has appointed you overseers, in which you tend the church of God that he acquired with his own blood. I know that after my departure, savage wolves will come among you, and they will not spare the flock. And from your own group, men will come forward, perverting the truth, to draw them away from after them. So be vigilant, and remember that for three years, night and day, I unceasingly admonished each of you with tears. And now I commend you to God and that to the gracious word of his that can build you up and give you the inheritance among all who are consecrated. I have never wanted anyone's silver or gold or clothing. You know well that these very hands have served my needs and my companions. In every way I have shown you that by hard work of that sort, we must help the weak and keep in mind the words of the Lord Jesus, who himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. When he had finished speaking, he knelt down and prayed with them all. They were all weeping loudly as they threw their arms around Paul and kissed him, for they were deeply distressed that he had said that they would never see his face again. Then they escorted him to the ship. The word of the Lord. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Show forth, O God, your power, the power, O God, with which you took our part. For your temple in Jerusalem, let the kings bring you gifts. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. You kingdoms of the earth, sing to God. Chant praise to the Lord who rides on the heights of the ancient heavens. Behold, his voice resounds the voice of power. Confess the power of God. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Over Israel is his majesty. His power is in the skies. Awesome in his sanctuary is God, the God of Israel. He gives power and strength to his people. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Your word, O Lord, is truth. Consecrate us in the truth. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory Lifting up his eyes to heaven, Jesus prayed, saying, Holy Father, keep them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one, just as we are one. When I was with them, I protected them in your name that you gave me, and I guarded them, and none of them was lost except the son of destruction, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you. I speak this in the world, so that they may share my joy completely. I gave them your word, and the world hated them, because they do not belong to the world any more than I belong to the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one, they do not belong to the world any more than I belong to the world. Consecrate them in truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I sent them into the world. And I consecrate myself for them, so that they also may be consecrated in truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. On Monday of this week, following the new executive order in Minnesota, the Archdiocese, Archdiocese released uh, updated directives for not only the churches, but the schools in the Archdiocese. And though the executive order changed the face covering requirements for most of us in most circumstances, including when we come to Mass, uh, it does require the continued use of face coverings for all public and non-public school children, kindergarten through 12th grade in the state of Minnesota. And so consequently, the Archdiocese stated that all of the Catholic schools uh, here must comply with the federal, state, and local laws. By Tuesday, the Archdiocesan Schools Office had received hundreds of of phone calls and emails expressing disapproval of the compliance, disappointment with the Archbishop. And at some schools yesterday, including one not too far away, where one of my good friends is pastor, uh, there were parent protests outside of the school throughout the day. In our first reading today, Paul warns the church of coming rupture, and in the gospel, Jesus prays that his disciples would be one, just as he and the Father are one. And in both of these cases, the words from Paul, the words from Jesus, expressing this reality that the circumstances of the world would threaten the unity of the disciples. And that the purpose of some agents in the world would be to get the disciples to break their communion with one another. And I know that not all of us agree about the severity of the coronavirus. Not all of us agree on the necessity or reasonableness of the regulations and directives. Not all of us agree on the wisdom of a vaccine. Not all of us agree with the archdiocesan directives during this time of pandemic, and we don't have to agree. But to allow that disagreement to manifest in public disunity is to allow the world to break our communion. And we are free, and perhaps even have a duty, to exercise faithful citizenship and hold elected officials accountable for their decisions, and to make known to them the impact of those decisions on our lives, we are free to express our disappointment with the Archbishop or with the Archdiocese. But if we do disagree and we do want to express that disagreement, we are called to imbue what we say, our discourse, with charity and with respect. And we are called to exercise obedience to the Archbishop. And if I have not already done so, let me do so now 
and that's express my gratitude to all of you. I have been grateful and remain grateful that at Good Shepherd we have not experienced public rupture over the various regulations and directives that have marked the last 14 months. The people of Good Shepherd have been remarkably docile and obedient, and that's something that has made my life so much easier, because this has not been the case at parishes across the Archdiocese. Uh, Friends of mine, other priests, other parishes have been dealing with really hostility and tension throughout this entire time, those sorts of manifestations that break the unity within the local church. And I'm so grateful that that has not happened here. And regardless of where you stand on all of these issues, uh, I would ask your prayers that we in the local church can find unity again. And that our parishes will not become battlegrounds with fighting factions. Manifestations of the disunity that Paul and our Lord Jesus so ardently desire that we would not have. We might pray that mask mandates and viruses do not draw us apart. but That we can be one. If we're going to disagree that we do so without breaking our unity. And there may be a time coming uh, when we are called upon to exercise civil disobedience. And there may be a time coming when we have to band together and fight against uh, real threats to our religious liberty, to our ability to practice, to worship Jesus Christ in spirit and truth uh, without persecution. And if that time comes, we will know. Um, But for now, just asking prayers for unity in the local church, unity in the church of Jesus Christ, that despite our differences, we might be one. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate as our dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, For the Lord Jesus, the King of glory, conqueror of sin and death, ascended to the highest heavens as the angels gazed in wonder. Mediator between God and man, judge of the world and Lord of hosts, he ascended not to distance himself from our lowly state, 
but that we, his members, might be confident of following where he, our head and founder, has gone before. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and Andrew, his assistant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. May the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring you to judgment and condemnation, but through your loving mercy be for me protection of mind and body and a healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. May the blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. When the paraclete comes, whom I will send you, the spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness to me, and you will bear witness, says the Lord. Alleluia. Taking of this divine sacrament, O Lord, constantly increase your grace within us, and by cleansing us with its power, make us always ready to receive so great a gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. Either later today or sometime tomorrow, I'll be sending out uh, just an update on the protocols for our masses on weekends going forward some of the slight changes there uh, and I'll also include uh, some news I received recently which is that I have been assigned to six more years here at Good Shepherd uh, and so <laughs> you either get me or you're stuck with me and either way you can you know, keep that but uh, I'm very happy to hear that so I'll share more about that uh, in that email and in the bulletin that's coming this week uh, we're regular this morning with Adoration and Confessions following Mass. Uh, tomorrow is School Mass Day, so we won't have that following Mass. And all of that will change next year, so we don't have disruption like that. Okay. The Lord be with you. And with you. <laughs> May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke and we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Mary, help of Christians, Saint Joseph, Saint Paul. Praise be Jesus Christ. Amen.